I'm going to invite you to use your imagination just a little bit. I want you to imagine what it would be like to live a life where every time you're wondering what the next step is for your spiritual growth or stepping into your life purpose, if you start feeling lost or overwhelmed, instead of letting that fear hold you back, you immerse yourself in art and nature and you get great clarity and you feel supported and inspired and you know what your next step is. I'm Tamara Hurl and I can show you how to live a life like this. You know that you're in the right place in listening to this video right now. If you wake up in the morning and you're thinking about going into work and you're just dreading it because it sucks the life out of you. Or maybe you're part of a system where no matter how hard you try, no matter how much you give, you're not seeing the results that you want or that others are expecting of you. Or maybe you just have a sense that you're make to, meant to make a greater or bigger impact in the world, but you're just not sure how to go about getting there. That was my story many years ago. I'd been working in mental health for 30 years, and I started feeling the urge to do something different. I remember one night I was restless. You know, I was thinking about what my work life was like. I would drive an hour to work and I'd sit at a desk for eight hours and see eight clients back to back. And then I'd drive an hour back home again. It was exhausting. And I was thinking, I, I just don't want to live the rest of my life like this, the rest of, rest of my career. So I couldn't sleep and I just asked myself, if you could do anything that you wanted to do, what would that be? The answer that came was start a retreat center. So I made a decision to go for it, even though I had no idea really of how I was going to get from where I was then to owning a retreat center. Initially, it felt like there was a huge gap in between where I was and where I wanted to be. And there were times when I felt really overwhelmed and scared. But what I discovered was, instead of letting that fear hold me back, I just needed to figure out what the next step was. I didn't need to have the whole thing figured out of, of, of how to make it happen, but only the next step. So I developed a process that I use to um, tap into divine guidance so I'll know what the next step is. And I wanted to share that process with you today. I call it planting seeds of change, because really, when we're stepping into something that we've never done before, it kind of involves, almost always, that you have to grow and change. So I call the process, um, or these steps, planting seeds of change. The, there's five seeds that are part of this process, and I'm going to tell you what they are. And then I'll tell you a little bit more about, about each one of them. The first one is trust. The second one is willingness. The third one is presence. The fourth one is curiosity. And the fifth one is diligence. So let's talk about the first seed of, for change that you need to plant. Trust. So the universe really is there to support us, but we have to trust that. We have to trust that, um, that we're not alone, that we're supported. There's a force that's greater than us that really wants us to step into our life purpose. A spiritual teacher that I once worked with said that the universe is streaming information to us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it's just, we have to trust that, that that's there. It can come in the form of um, music that we might hear on the radio, or maybe um, an animal or insect that we see around us, or a friend calls, or a, dro a book drops off the shelf. Those are ways that the universe is streaming support to us. The second step, or the second seed that you need to plant for change is willingness. You know, that just involves being opening up, being willing 
to open up to the guidance that's around us. You know, you could be at the bottom of a hole. Let's say that you fell into a hole and you can't get out on your own. And someone tries to throw a rope down and maybe someone else has a ladder that they're willing to put down. But if you're not open to, to being willing to accept that help, then you're not gonna be able to get the results that you want. The third seed for change that you need to plant in order to, to receive guidance from the universe is, will, is presence. So, you know, let's just say, again, going with that image of a person in a hole, if they're so up in their head all and worrying about, oh my gosh, how am I going to get out of here? I'm stuck. What if I die here? They could be all caught up in their thoughts like that. And they wouldn't even maybe notice that they wouldn't have the presence, be in the present moment, and notice that there was a rope hanging down on one side and a ladder behind them on the other. So we have to really be present. And that involves quieting your mind and paying attention to what's happening in your body, just really learning to use our senses. That really can help us tap into divine guidance from the universe. The next seed of change that is really helpful to plant if you're trying to deepen your connection to divine guidance is curiosity. And that just be, involves being willing to see the information that you receive in new ways. Kind of be curious about what, what you're seeing. Like the example that I used before with the woman who, who, who saw the bird. Yeah, so of all the things that she could have seen right then, why did she see the bird? And what did it mean that it moved from a, a branch that was stable and a branch that was moving up and down? You know, and I think if she had been able to be curious about it and to try to see it in a new way and to realize that the universe often speaks to us in metaphors like that, then she would have realized that she was getting some divine guidance. I think it really, um, sometimes the universe will plant ideas in our mind. Have you ever noticed that sometimes an idea will just pop into your head and you're like, where did that come from? It happens to me a lot when I'm sleeping or trying to sleep and I get these ideas that pop into my head. And I just feel like that's really the universe trying to support me. And the last seed of change is diligence. So it, 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 this involves just being willing to apply the information that you have received in many areas of your life. Let's say, for instance, the universe has given you a message, it, you know, that it's time to be more confident. And so if you're a parent, how can you be more confident as a parent? If you're a, a teacher, how can you be more confident in that job, in that job that you have? So really just being able to, willing to apply what you've learned in different areas of your life. Because I've learned how to do this and use this process, because I've planted these seeds, my life is so different now than it used to be. Every day I wake up and I get to do what I love. I get to spend time in nature before or after the virtual sessions that I do. And then with my retreats and team building, I actually get to take people out on the land. So we get to be in nature experiencing these things, learning these things. I get to help them create images that, that help them break through blocks. And it's just amazing. And I don't say this to brag, but I say this because if it's possible for me, it's possible for you too. There's no reason why this can't be happening for you. The universe wants you to have the life that you love and the universe wants you to expand into who you're meant to be. So I'd like to tell you about a couple of things that you can do to practice tapping into divine guidance. The first is, um, well, first of all, when you do these two experiential processes, begin by writing down a question that you have about your life purpose, maybe a challenge, maybe you're wanting to know what your next step is. So write down whatever question it is that, that you have. So the first experiential process that you can try is, it comes from art therapy and it's called a scribble drawing. What you do is to take a drawing utensil in your non-dominant hand, take a deep breath, close your eyes, 
and then begin to scribble with your left hand. Just kind of a slow meandering line that goes around on the paper and then you stop. It's fun to do this with your eyes closed. And then open your eyes and look at the, the scribble that you've created and try to find an image within the scribble. It's kind of like looking up at the clouds and finding uh, like, you know, a butterfly or a fish up in the, uh, in the clouds. So you do that. Look at, the, look at the image that you found and you can make it stand out more, um, enhance some of the lines, make them darker, ignore some of the others, add more lines. And it's also fun to add a background. So that's a great process. And one way that you can tap into divine guidance. The second thing that I invite you to do is maybe just grab a pine cone and really begin to explore it with all of your senses. Hold the pine cone in your hand. Feel the shape of it. Notice if there are areas that are smooth and areas that are pokey, but just really exploring with your sense of touch. And then explore the pine cone with your sense of smell. So bring it close up to your nose and just see, maybe it smells different at the top than it does at the bottom. And then explore the pine cone using your sense of taste. So you can hold the pine cone just right in front of your mouth and breathe in through your mouth and see if you can taste the pine cone. You can also explore it with your other senses, the sense of sight. So looking at the pine cone, looking at the bottom, noticing the colors, all the different colors. There's brown, there's tan, but really noticing the colors, noticing the pattern. Some, some pine cones have a really beautiful spiral pattern on the bottom. So really exploring the, the pine cone with your sense of sight. And as you notice all of these things, if there's any sense of pleasure, that you experience, just drink that in. You know, we don't allow ourselves to experience pleasure often. So drinking in the pleasure and just really paying attention to what you notice. Now, after you have finished exploring the pine cone and doing the scribble drawing, then I invite you to go back to that question that you wrote and find the connection, be curious, explore the metaphors, that have shown up. And of all the things that you could have seen in that scribble drawing, why did you see what you did and how does that relate to the question that you had? So that is a great, those two things are a great way to really explore the divine guidance that's available to you from the universe whenever you need it so that you can know what your step, next step is. Now we could take this process deeper, but I don't want this video to go on and on. So if you're intrigued by this process, I invite you to reach out to me and discover, for a discovery call. It takes about 30 minutes and I'll, you know, I'll just talk to you about what you're experiencing and, and I'll do some coaching with you and try to figure out how to help you know what your next step is to move into your life purpose and living that more fully. This is really important for us to be living our life purpose right now. You know, there's just so many things that are going on in the world around us. And if you're bothered by things in your life and in things that you see around you in the world, take it as a sign, like a wake up call from the universe. I'd like to end by sharing a quote with you. It's from a Hopi elder prophecy. I, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but I'll read some of my favorite parts. They say, um, there's a river now and it's flowing very fast. It's so great and swift that there are those who will be afraid. They will try to hold on to the shore. They will feel they're being torn apart and will suffer greatly. But know that the river has its destination. The elders say that we must let go of the shore, push off into the middle of the river, keep our eyes open and our heads above the water, Pay attention to who's in the river with you and celebrate that. Gather yourselves. Banish the word struggle from your vocabulary and your life and your attitude. All that we do now must be done in a sacred manner and in celebration. Because we 
are the ones that we've been waiting for. <laughs>